welcome to Abuelas en Acción. My name is Marie Dahlstrom, and I'm here with my dear friend and co-host, Dr. Rosemary Celia Alston. We are excited to be in our new series, Nuestra Sabiduría, Unwrapping Our Stories for Soul-Filled Living. This series evolved from the many, many interviews and uh, uh, podcast episodes and amazing people that we've had the opportunity to get to know and what we know about ourselves and our families and what we've been going through during these times of transition, challenges, and difficulties. Um, we are uh, living in what um, climate scientists say could be um, one of our last coolest summers. Um, the planet is warming, life is changing rapidly. How do we deal with all of this? Um, uh, and, and so in this series, we will build our skills for moving through these intense and challenging times. Esteemed poets, and writers Joy Harjo and Sandra Cisneros write, wellness isn't a perfect state of being, but a state of preparedness for the inevitable hardships in life. Happiness is, is attainable, but it isn't what uh, our society tells us. It's not about having a, a huge house, the newest car, the newest iPhone. It's pretty, it's pretty simple and yet pretty hard at times. It's being present in the moment. It's being mindful of our lives. It's a presence where we are in this moment and studying, a steadying of our hearts and our minds. Life is challenging, that's a given. It is the human condition. And we all, we all deal with hardships in life. However, being present with the joys and the challenges of life is where we really feel fully alive. Not in the fantasies of the future or the reruns of the past. Being present in the moment requires that we quiet our mind. We learned to pay attention to our feelings, the emotions and sensations in our body. And we steady our minds through pausing and opening our hearts to listen to our souls, our intuition, and our wisdom. Our sabiduría is our wisdom our inner knowledge that's been slumbering in our souls, awaiting a time to be reawakened. You might say we're decolonizing the sacred as our ancestors and universe have been waiting for us to return to us, our souls and our knowledge. The poet Rumi says, as you start to walk on the way the way appears. The universe isn't outside of you. Look inside yourself. Everything you want, you already have. Just as water reflects, starts, and the moon, the body reflects the mind and the spirit. Looking inside ourselves requires us to deal, however, with our emotional pain. Difficult emotions such as shame, anger, loneliness, fear, despair, and confusion. We all experience them, but often avoid these difficult feelings. In fact, I don't know about you, but there are times when I will do whatever I need to in order to avoid them, like get on to um, do some work or get involved in a project or distract myself through um, the latest Netflix streaming. But those difficult feelings 
don't go away, as we all know. And we can learn to deal with these by acknowledging and honoring our pain and responding to it through kindness and self-compassion. Self-compassion for having those feelings because they are all part of the human condition. When we fight our pain, we get trapped in it. Change happens when we open ourselves to emotional pain. Through practice, we can live mindfully and with compassion. Rosemary and I will talk about the power of gratitude and breathing in what we call those awe moments in life, moments that touch our souls. We become aware of these moments, quieting and calming our minds. Reflection, meditation, and praying are practices that are essential to calming our minds. We will learn to see and work all of the energies in our bodies and minds. When we are mindful, we are able to respond rather than react to life. We will notice what's going on in our lives with a mindful and loving kindness. We will notice those our body and those emotions and sensations that are present in our bodies. We will notice our grief and pain and the love that we all long for. What we will find is our love for ourselves for it is through self-compassion that we're able to deepen our compassion for others. The poet Naomi Shihab Nye says, where you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the deepest thing. The world is changing. That's our reality. We don't know what the future holds for our planet. Learning to surrender to the unknown in our lives, those uncertainties that can be challenging for us. Our ability to surrender to those unknown come from our resilience and is essential to bring the time of change, disruption, and breakdown. It is during those times of uncertainty in our times that we have the potential, so much courage, personal growth, and new insights. Happy to have you with us. Thank you, Marie, for that beautiful introduction to this new series of ours. I've missed you all. I think you've spoken very clearly about you know, when life really hits us and what we do and what the hit our bodies take um, when it hits us. And looking at the word mindfulness and being able to really understand what that means. It's not a foreign word, but if you break it up to be mindful, to give yourself time to be right here, right now, present. Um, many of us, at, at least I can name myself for one, had a five-year plan, a five-year goal. And I think what life has taught me is there's no such thing. It's really great to have. However, um, our lives can take on different pathways, different journeys that make us stand tall. And in a dime, we can lose everything. And we think that this journey may be alone. An example of that currently is the devastation of what the Maui land and the Maui people, children and family, are going through right now. In a dime, they had everything. They had their homes, their businesses, their families, and now they're left with ashes and how to pick up oneself from having nothing at all. And they are showing us the courage 
the resilience that it takes to be Maui strong. And I am grateful for being able to be reminded every day, all of our belongings can be taken, how we connect with others and what we essentially do in terms of relationship is what is important. To be here, to be present, and to give yourself permission just to slow down, just to take time. Lean in to those hard times, not walk away and be fearful of them, but lean into them in a different kind of way. Sometimes some of these skill building um, exercises may help you and you may create your own and we look forward to that as well. Thank you for being with us. In each of our episodes, we will be talking about the importance of daily practice in writing and um, meditation, reflection, and prayers being central. Telling our stories through art, writing, and storytelling are sacred acts that many of us have forgotten. It's time for us to reclaim our creative energy. Our creative forces become alive through our mindful awareness and presence of life. Creativity is in each one of us and is waiting to emerge. Rosemary and I encourage you to dedicate time to writing and meditating and reflecting. It can just be a few minutes, a few minutes, or it can be longer. But make the commitment and build a regular time in your day, a time of day that is, whether it be first thing in the morning or maybe in the evening after things are quiet in your home. You can meditate as you're walking. You can meditate while you are waiting in line, um, uh, waiting in traffic. Uh, it doesn't matter, but take that time, as Rosemary said, for presence, quiet, and to just breathe. I want to talk about the importance of writing or journaling. Write whatever comes to your mind. It doesn't matter what you write. Just write. Because it is through writing that we can begin to hear our voice, soul. Your journal can be a place to appreciate the little and the big things in life. From seeing a beautiful landscape to tasting amazing food, any moment, large or small, these pages are yours. They're a place to write down one thing or many things that moved you each day. Something you or someone you are grateful for, your gratitude, your challenging moments in life. Take the time to be able to write whatever comes to your mind. And we'll be talking about that throughout the series. Well, let's get comfortable wherever you're at, whether it's at a desk, on the couch, outside. Let's just get comfortable. You are welcome to have your eyes open or closed. Allow yourself to settle right here in your body and notice what is here. Is there tension, relaxation, some pain, some pleasure, or a neutral feeling? Be aware of your body sensations, sounds, and breathing. Take a deep breath. Out. In and out. Whenever you're aware that your mind is distracted, gently bring it back to your body. Set the intention to come home to yourself, to be present for you. You deserve this care. You are precious and unique. 
And in all the world, there is no one else who brings the precise combination of you that you bring. Allow yourself to arrive here fully. You may already begin to feel yourself settling into your body, coming home inside you. The place of your strength, your wisdom, your clarity. A place that is trustworthy and capable of providing you with a refuge and a form. But if not, continue to stay with awareness of your body, sensation, sound, and breathing. A sense of coming home will develop over time. You gradually will become more attuned to yourself and find that you have always been at home. You can repeat, I have arrived. I am home. You can connect the words with your breathing. Arrived, in breath, home. You can take one last deep breath in, out, like you're blowing a candle, slowly opening your eyes, gently stretching your hands. You may want to try this practice of people in daily life as well, not just a meditation, as a meditation, but as you sit in traffic. Or in a line at the grocery store. You can practice connecting your experience out by saying, yourself and have a life. We are honored to have you join us on Abuela Senacion. We thank Familia Senacion in Portland, Oregon for the commitment to Abuelas and their generous support. Please join us on Abuelas en Acción.